we have been working on getting our food forest installed on our new property and I'm going to walk you through the steps we have taken so far in getting it put in. So our current situation is we have bought 43 acres of recently cleared commercial pine forest. This of course means that we, it's had heavy machinery all over it, the ground is incredibly compacted, a lot of the big logs and big sticks have been churned into the soil, a lot of the topsoil is nowhere to be seen, it's all churned up together and it's a real challenge to try and get something productive happening here. We have had a proper soil test done and it shows really high levels of iron and aluminium and salt and really low levels of pretty much everything else. It's incredibly acidic, I think its pH was 4.6 or 4.8, I can't remember exactly but very acidic. And so far we have yet to find any naturally occurring worms or beetles or any sort of life like that in the soil. We do however have an area that we got cleared um, by a contractor that we had come in after the forestry guys had left and so he's moved all the big logs out of the way as best as he could and it's a slope that faces our north which is our sunny side. It is a little exposed to both the winds off the coast and the big heavy southerly that we get but it's not too bad especially once you get further down the hill there's sort of a wee bit of a flatter area that gets all day sun and very little wind so that's where we're going to be putting our plants that prefer it to be a little bit hotter. Our goal with this area is to create a food forest that's about a quarter of an acre. I do need to check the size, but it's a, based around fruit trees and fruit production. But amongst that will also be huge amounts of medicinal herbs, other vegetables, as well as that we want to have ducks, maybe some bantam chickens in amongst them. And we want to be able to harvest as much out of there as possible whilst also growing the mulch that we need and the compost that we need all within the same area. Our big challenges with this piece of land in particular is obviously the hard clay soil and because of the slope the water is just running straight off it. You can see in the angle of the sticks still in the soil that the water just streams straight down and it's washing what small amount of topsoil we had is washing away down there. And this also means that soil underneath that crust, even though we've had a lot of rain recently, is still very dry because the water is not getting a chance to soak in. We also have limited cash. We have spent quite a lot on getting the bulldozer and the digger in to do the infrastructure changes that he has done. And so we've run out of money for those sorts of things. So we're going to have to do this bit on a budget. And also spring is here and our plants are just starting to form their buds, which means we need to get these fruit trees in the ground. So what are our solutions to these problems? My very first one is something that's a little controversial in the permaculture space and that is to do some tilling. Now we're not going to till the entire area partly because it's on a hill and partly because it's a lot of work and partly because it's quite destructive uh, but we are going to till ourselves in some spaces that we can dig for some swales. So the very first thing we did was got a level. Thankfully for us, we own a laser level. Another option is to use an A-frame. It's a wonderful invention, very simple to do. You have an A-frame of sticks and one across the middle and you can hang something heavy through it. And when it hangs perfectly in the middle, you know your legs are level. And there are so many videos explaining how to mark out and place your swales that I'm actually not gonna go into it here. And then I pinged a string line between each end and marked the ground so that my husband could use the tiller because I'm not strong enough to do so. Um, and he tilled both the side where we'll be putting the berm as well as the uphill side where we would be digging the swale. This is because this ground is too hard. I tried digging it myself and it took about three hours to go all of uh, maybe two or three meters, which is what, six to nine feet. It took me a really long time digging it by hand and this was not a big swale. We have deliberately made them quite small partly because we're going to do quite a few of them, um, partly because it's on a slope and well, quite a significant slope in some areas and partly just 
because it's really hard going and we're having to do it by hand. If we had access to a free mini digger, we would definitely be doing these with that and I would probably, in all honesty, make them a bit larger, but this will be perfectly fine for what we need. The reason we're tilling under where the berms are going is because we want the plant's roots to be able to permeate right down in there as quickly as possible. And then manually I have gone along with my shovel and very slowly <laughs> carved out these pathways and tossed them up onto where the berm is going. These swales are not particularly deep. At most I think I've managed to hit about four inches, which is not deep when you start looking at the amount of swales around and the different sizes that people use. But it is manageable for me to be able to dig it by hand. It is about as far as our tiller managed to get in most areas because of the hard clay or the sticks or the tree trunks or whatever else it found. On the upside, they are working. We have had quite a bit of rain since we dug them and they are holding the water and permeating it down into the soil and they're taking about two days to drain, which in a hard clay soil, I don't think that's that bad. Once I had them dug out, then I went along with a rake and shaped them a little bit better so that they, so the backside where it comes down the hill, it gently sloped into the swale and then it was sort of a gentle slope up onto the berm and then I flattened the tops of the berms as best I could and then a gentle slope off the other side. The idea with the flat top is hopefully to catch that rain that's coming straight from the sky. The gentle sides are to try and stop it caving away. Once we had these done, the trick usually with a berm like this is to throw your cover crop seeds around as quickly as possible. Now for us, I don't, I'm not convinced that a cover crop is going to seed well in the soil. So we have other plans that we're going to do with those, which I will explain shortly. What I did do as soon as possible was, in fact it was within about 24 hours, started getting our trees up there and laying out where we wanted them. Our swales we have put between four and five meters apart. Uh, this is to allow plenty of space for the trees to grow up and grow big and still allow decent walkways in between. We will be keeping these trees quite small. I don't want to have to be picking fruit using a ladder on such a steep slope in some places. Other places it's not so steep, but still I don't like ladders. So the best um, idea for us is to try and keep these fruit trees as close to six to eight feet tall as possible. And my aim with setting these out is to go tree, bush, tree, bush, tree, bush. And honestly, I didn't pay too much attention as to which trees and which bushes I put in. I think there is far too much getting caught up on trying to work out what trees and what bushes go well together. There's a concept of guilds where things um, can work well together and I think there's definitely some merit in that but there's also paralysis in the analysis and people get so scared they're going to stuff it up that they don't even try. These are pretty much all fruit trees that I'm planting in there and pretty much all the fruit bushes, vines, um, shrubs in between times. So instead of worrying too much about which order I'm putting them in, I did think about the ones that needed it warmer. So for us that is apricots and peaches. They are further down the hill on the sunny side of the slope where there's less wind and more sun. And the slightly more hardier apples and pears and plums I have tended to put further up the hill. And then the shrubs and bushes I have used in between them include currants, gooseberries, worcesterberries, and I've got quite a selection of raspberries and boysenberries and a loganberry, and I've got a few more berry plants around that I'm going to put in there as well, as well as um, a few feijoas and a couple of fig trees as well that I will keep a little bit smaller. And what I did was made sure that my trees were a good five to six paces apart. And then in between those is where I put the bushes. And then in between each of those, I'm going to be putting some comfrey and a lot of medicinal herbs. And then around in the big gaps between the rows, I have fantastic plans for lots of wildflowers for the bees, as well as some um, like lupins, which the bees don't really like. 
um, and oats and peas to chop and drop them around my trees as a mulch. And as I said before, I don't think throwing those cover crops around is going to work very well in this hard soil. So what we do have is a very large pile of compost and so I plan on putting little skinny rows where I want these wildflowers to grow and sprinkling the seeds in that and that will hopefully give them a fine enough medium that they can get started and hopefully I'm hoping they'll be able to push their roots down into the clay so once I had unloaded my two big trailer loads of trees thankfully I had grafted and grown some from seed so I had quite a selection that didn't cost me too much I started digging and the nice thing about digging a fruit tree into a berm that has also been tilled underneath was it was really easy digging which is fantastic the other thing I did with each of those trees we had some young roosters from a flock that we were raising and so we um, processed those and have buried those in with quite a few of the fruit trees as well as a nutrient source if we didn't have that we also applied some organic fertilizer in the hole with the tree and most of my trees have been potted up in very large pots with lots of compost and potting mix so that all went in that hole as well and then on top of that we have used some of the bark mulch that we've got we have quite a lot of it uh, given that they processed all those pine trees at our place so we have done a ring of mulch around all the trees and all the bushes um, and kind of volcanoed the top to try and catch the rain and put it in and direct it into where the tree is. This will not only break down and help feed the soil and keep the roots nice and moist as well as encouraging that wonderful fungi growth that happens in forests but also when the grass and gorse starts growing it will stop those choking out the little trees. After that we gave them a good water. Thankfully on the second day when I was planting trees it actually rained just as I was finishing up and it was a good rain so I didn't have to water those trees which was quite a relief because they were the ones on the steeper bank. And the very last thing I did was painted them all with some dairy repellent if you haven't met deer repellent before this is one that you can make yourself it's also known as bone sauce and I have a video all about it that you can check it out here thank you for joining me today if you have any questions or comments about our developing food forest please stick them in the comments down below and I will do my very best to answer them and I will see you in the next one